Hey, my name is Anthony O'Connell, Upper Feast. Thank you so much for listening. I'm a man with a high voice. I moved to New York City to pursue stand-up comedy. Then I started a food blog in the Upper East Side of Manhattan. I recently moved back to Columbus, Ohio and decided to start a food podcast. I'll be interviewing people that love to Upper Feast. People in the service industry, restaurant owners, foodies, comedians, anybody who loves food, I'll be talking to them. Thank you so much for listening. My first guest today is Deirdre. She's amazing. She's a bartender. Met her at one of the busiest restaurants in New York. We worked together for years. She has an amazing laugh. You'll hear it. It rules. It really like warms your heart. She's just really cool. She's an artist. She takes really great photos. She loves food. She has cool dogs. In this episode, we talk about Deirdre having an amazing meal in Greece, being a New York City bartender. She was cooking rice and started a fire, an awful brunch experience, and how New York City prices get rid of sticker shock. Anyways, thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe, tell a friend, leave a review. Feast or pass? Foie gras. Pass. Pass? Now, is it because you think it's unethical or you just don't think it tastes good? I I don't think it tastes good. It's not for me, but I'm sure the right answer would have been those poor geese and their livers. It's geese, right? It's goose liver? It's somebody's liver? It's, I think it's duck or geese, because I actually Googled it to confirm, because I always thought it was only duck, but then other people say geese, but it's actually both. I personally love it. I Big feast for me. I think it's super unethical, but also super delicious. So like what- can Super you- problematic, but does that make it taste better? <laughs> you can taste the pain, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> well, the thing is, is, you know, the animal's going to die either way. So it's like the best life, the worst life. Does it really? I don't know. I'm sure we'll get some vegetarians or vegans to let us know. Yeah, but that's no shade. I was vegetarian. No shade. (laughs) I could be vegetarian. I don't think I could ever be vegan because I need cheese in my life. Uh, Need it. Not want it. Need it. Like, what are you gonna have no pizza the rest of your life? That's madness. Oh, hell no. What do you just have a hamburger? (laughs) (laughs) When the option for cheese is right there. (laughs) And it's usually a dollar more. (laughs) Right. Well, if you're vegan, I don't think you'd eat a hamburger, though. (laughs) (laughs) What are you going to have? Just a Beyond Burger? (laughs) Right, exactly. (laughs) That's why I paused for a minute, because I kind of thought maybe you were doing a bit. But I was like, no, she just (laughs) vegan burgers. Um, So vegan food in general, would you say feast or pass on vegan food? Uh, Feast. Yeah, same. I, I just, the only reason I ask that is I feel like some people are like weirdly, violently opposed to vegan food and I uh, just figured I'd throw that in there for fun. That's silly. Um, I had some really good uh, fake General Sows the other day. That was tasty. Oh I was vegetarian, probably not vegan, but I've had some good vegan stuff. When you said the the, the fake General Sows, it reminded me one time at the old job, the old Italian restaurant in Times Square, um ye old pasta palace right pasta pushers baby for life um but this lady ordered she wanted a a vegetarian chicken parm yeah i'll have a vegetarian chicken parm and i was like uh what eggplant parm it is coming right up and that's what i offered i was like do you mean like an eggplant parm she had to like i was the idiot she was like no i want a vegetarian chicken parm i was like do you mean like a soy product and then she like said it again <laughs> like meaner and more condescending no the vegan oh, i was like all right cool so i just rang in chicken parm and yep. ate her chicken parm the angrier that the customer says it uh the more likely they'll be able to get it so if you just keep repeating vegetarian chicken parm then the chef is just gonna appear with vegetarian chicken parm right and i always i always love when they, they like try to name drop they're like yeah i know the owner or, or i know xyz manager it's like cool <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I know him too. He's fine. He doesn't, you know, he's all right. So let's see one more, one more feaster pass here. Fast food. Do you, do you, do you like fast food? I do, but I am, I have my fast foods that I enjoy and then ones I won't even like to touch. Like I think Wendy's is like top tier fast food. I'm not really like a Taco Bell person. McDonald's, if their ice cream machine is working, <laughs> I'll do a, I'll do a McFlurry happily. Uh, but Wendy's is like my go-to. Wendy's is pretty elite. I normally just do spicy chicken. Mm-hmm. Um, I just do the small, like a coward. I think a small fry is enough, but. <laughs> like a coward. 
<laughs> just do a, a casual small fry there. Taco Bell, if I'm like super drunk or stoned or something, then Taco Bell, sure. But sober, no thank you. I grew up, um, a part of my life, I lived in Buffalo. And in Buffalo, we have this beautiful fast food place called Mighty Taco. So that squashes Taco Bell. Like Mighty Taco is the spot. I've never heard. So I think that it's very, very Buffalo. I don't even know. I don't think I've ever seen one outside of Buffalo or the Buffalo suburbs. But I think due to Mighty Taco, I have zero interest in Taco Bell. Is it like a fast food place or is it like a mom pop, like a real restaurant? A hundred percent fast food. Oh, wow. <laughs> Dang. I, I love buffalo wings. I, I, I could drink buffalo sauce if it were socially acceptable. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's another great place in the South called Cookout. Now, you need to get to North Carolina <laughs> because never in my life have I seen a place where you could get a burger and have your sides be chicken nuggets and a quesadilla. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm here for it <laughs> i've never seen quesadilla as a side before i was like blown away absolute madness but the well, burger was good i'm into it i mean you know i don't know if you remember i uh on upper feast i once posted a lobster roll on top of a slice of pizza just for fun <laughs> <laughs> everybody, for hated it. everybody hated it yeah, like, your um your followers through a coup d'etat. <laughs> I got comments ranging from uh why the hell would you do this? That looks <laughs> disgusting. You're gonna get diabetes. And I was like, Jesus <laughs> Christ, like one lobster roll and one slice, it's not the worst in the world. <laughs> You're like, I'm sorry I wasn't dippy dippying. Right. Next time. I really thought it was gonna go viral too, but like they were just like hard pass, dude. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Oh. Like, you know we're not dessert people we're definitely not lobster roll on pizza people give us our sandwich profile and the dip and we're happy oh man people love a dip do you share food i'm the type of person who will collaborate with the people at the table so that we can have like a little bit of everything bring the share plates let's get like one of everything and everybody has everything yeah I that, think like i'd rather do that than have like my own meal because then your meal starts to look really good. I want to try it, but I don't want to order a whole second meal for myself. <laughs> so I'm from the camp of let's order everything and everybody shares. But I do also have people in my life that are like, don't touch my plate. This is my food. <laughs> yeah, don't even look at it too long. Like you're making me uncomfortable. Yeah. That's great. And now I love, I love your method too. Like everyone gets a little bit of everything. That's pretty elite. So what do you think is is the best dining experience. Do you have like a story or two of, of your best dining experience? One of my best dining experiences was actually in this little restaurant in Greece because it was on the water and the person I was with, their friend knew the manager. So we kept like going swimming and then going to eat. But the food, like we would order, we would like went through the whole menu. We would order something and everybody would share. And it was like octopus and, um, hummus and I don't know all these like signature Greek dishes that were really really good as far as food here I've had I think I've been pretty lucky with uh dining experiences in terms of the companies that I'm with and the food that we get or the restaurants that we choose a lot of my friends do hella research on <laughs> menus and things before they even make a reservation or read reviews or whatever so I've had some pretty awesome experiences here in the city. I like going to Quality Italian is one of my favorites because their food is always just so good. They have this toast with ricotta cheese and honey. It's stupid. It doesn't make any sense as to how good it is, but it is. Well, you know, I think I think ricotta and honey is kind of a match made in heaven and I'm always a carb fan. Carbs are life for me. So bread, I'm into it. Um, <laughs> so when you went to Greece, you said you were swimming in between bites that sounds risky like I feel like I would get a cramp I'm such a dork <laughs> <laughs> I, I waited like one hour after each plate was served <laughs> you 
know what's funny? I don't even know if that's true or like in like an old myth or something, but I'm just such a dork. Like I feel like you and your friends were probably all cool and attractive and just snacking and ooh, that's cool. Well, it, it, it helps that I think I drank like 20 Aperol spritzes. So I was like, cramps be damned, I'm getting in this water. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I love an Aperol spritz. It's so delightful. I actually, I wish I had one right now. I'm kind of low key. Me too. Oh. Well, I don't have a drinking problem, but today's my Saturday. So <laughs> <laughs> Anthony, it's a Thursday. Good Lord. But my days off are Thursday, Friday. So that's why I, I bought a six pack of beer, but then I also bought whiskey and I was like the whiskey. What kind of whiskey and what kind of beer? So I went to the grocery store and quick side note, I got to give a shout out to the grocery stores in the Midwest. I'm obsessed. They're huge. They're massive. They're like, Walmart. can you, can you walk down the aisle and someone else can walk down the aisle coming towards you and there's just oh, yeah. space for everyone and their carts. Yes, of course. And we're, we're oh. fat here. We're fat out here in the Midwest and two carts can fit comfortably, maybe two and a half really, but. Oh, now you're bragging. <laughs> it's the lap of luxury, Deirdre. Um, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I did a mix pack, six pack, mix pack, mix, mix pack, six pack. There you go. So I got like a couple IPAs and a couple like fruity fun ones. And then the whiskey was Maker's Mark. Mm. Love a Maker's Mark. I do love a Maker's Mark. So when you were in Greece, Dinan, did, this might be like a really ignorant question, but did you get a Euro? Like, is that, a, is that like a real thing? Or is that like only Americanized? No, it's a real thing. They have like fast food spots that do like the Euro, but they're, I'm trying to think if it was that or something else. And there's french fries in it. Oh, hell yeah. I'm on board with that. We'll throw a little feta on top. What's better than feta? Yeah. Oh, that <laughs> nothing is better than feta. So it was like the, if I remember correctly, it was like all the regular stuff that goes in a gyro. And then there's french fries in the sandwich, in the pita, which I thought was awesome. Yeah, I'm fully on board for that. That, that reminds me of like the, the Pittsburgh sandwich with the coleslaw, the french fries, and the burger. Mm, yeah. I've never had one. It's actually, I don't know, I forget the name of the restaurant, but it's its actually very mediocre. I was disappointed in it. Oh, man. How is it working in this pandemic? Indoor dining at 25% started yesterday. Nice. So we'll see how that goes. There are a bunch of rules as far as like everyone who enters the restaurant has to have their temperature checked. Uh, one person from each party has to put all of their contact info. Um, so there's a lot of stuff that goes into just having the table sit down. But I also don't know how comfortable New Yorkers are as far as they seem to be comfortable eating outdoors. Certain nights of the week, everybody's out and about. It's popping. I think everybody's a little sick of sitting in their apartments, but I don't know how people feel about dining indoors yet. Yeah, that's going to be really interesting. And plus for me, like vibes and ambiance are a huge part of a restaurant experience for me. And I just feel like- hundred percent. And if it's only 25% full and you got to do a, a, a security check and it, I wouldn't even want to do it. That sounds, I mean, I know you got to eat and like you hope people do it, but that sounds really- It's, a, it's a lot of work to go out to eat. Um, and it's also a lot of work to have people come in and eat. I'm lucky that I'm working at a place that they're like going with, they're rolling with the punches. It is growing pains, but everybody's really patient and everybody's trying to like make the best out of it and really like working hard to make sure that everything goes smoothly for everybody. And while, while keeping everybody safe, you know, safety for the staff didn't go out the window, which would have happened at many, many, many other restaurants that I've worked at. Oh yeah, of course. I think our old job where you and I both worked, which can remain nameless, no free clout. <laughs> um, <laughs> not on my watch, baby. Right, exactly. But they would throw us under a bus if they could make a dollar. I really believe that. A hundred percent. Now, do you have to wear the stupid plastic shield or just a face mask? Just a face mask. We get our temperature checked when we go in the building. Then we get our temperature checked again when we go in the restaurant. We have to fill out a questionnaire. And there's hand sanitizer everywhere. There's hand washing stations everywhere. And then we wear a mask. And then as staff, we're not allowed to like, like if you're putting in a food order and I'm waiting to put in the food orders, obviously I'm standing around you, but our congregation time is limited like to less than 10 minutes. They don't want us like standing around the host stands, shooting the, sh which no restaurant manager wants that anyway, but it's like extra like no hugging no you know handshakes no no <laughs> <laughs> definitely none of that <laughs> i'm 
start. Not while you're clocked <laughs> in anyway. <laughs> Once you clock out, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> oh my goodness um so i wonder when it gets chilly out are you guys gonna put like a space heater out front i just had an image of like a bunch of little apartment space heaters <laughs> on tables <laughs> but <laughs> like i'm paying 20 dollars for a martini and this is my YouTube? sweet my place is doing big heaters that's cool such crazy times are you eating out much these days or not really probably Two or three times a week, I'll go to some place in my neighborhood because there's so many good food options up here. I had El Sal, I had food Salvadorian food the other night, Colombian food, sushi. Nice. And it's been I've I've enjoyed the seeing all the restaurants and like their creativity levels of like how they make the outdoor dining work for them within the the rules of COVID. It's I like seeing how people are putting stuff together. That's been pretty cool. Yeah, it's nice. It, it does show that we have a little bit of uh, resilience. I mean, it's crazy hard times and it's super challenging and hard, but I think people are trying their best and that's kind of nice. It's a little positivity, I guess. Yeah. So yeah, there's some, I mean, at the beginning of this, I, I was really good about staying home when it was getting super crazy here in New York in like um, April, the end of March, April and May. I stayed home. I cooked every meal for myself. I know that's like, people are like, so what? You're an adult. <laughs> <laughs> but let me tell you something. Three meals a day for however many months. I'm just tired of doing the dishes. <laughs> and I don't mind cooking. I'll cook every meal. That's cool. But doing the dishes every, oh my goodness. I know it's such a silly complaint because. No, it makes sense. <laughs> no, I'm but board. Dishes are, even if you have a dishwasher, which I do because I'm in the Midwest now. Uh, Rag alert. First the grocery stores, now a dishwasher. <laughs> Let me guess, you got a nice backyard too? <laughs> oh, so much space. Um, <laughs> I actually, I'm super lucky because uh, once a week I go to my sister's house and I do upper feast at home where I, I cook for her, her, her and her boyfriend. But the deal is uh, I do all the cooking and then they do all the cleaning. It's like a match. Oh man, I got to get that deal. I wish my dogs could do the dishes. Or something. So my my stepdad's mother has this great story. Um, when she was younger, she went to one of her friends' houses for dinner, and they're eating and everything's fine and normal and whatever. But then at the end of dinner, she literally has the dog lick the plate clean, and then she puts um, it in the cupboard. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> and just imagine the horror of you just ate this whole meal with like dog saliva, most likely. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is is like Deirdre she's not like an exaggerator like I believe that happened 100% like if my mom told me that story I'd be like you're lying like you're just making it have fun Lisa, my mom are you telling stories <laughs> <laughs> that's right so I think that kind of leads into like a worst at home cooking experience do you have a, a worst cooking experience this wasn't horrible but when I was a kid I was trying to make French toast and I didn't understand there was a difference between French toast and pancakes. So I like made the Bisquick, put the, dunked the bread in the Bisquick and then was trying to like fry French toast, but it had a pancake around it. That was like a happy mistake. That sounds um, really good. Was it good? It sounds like it kind of could be a win. It was all right. It was definitely not what I was going for. I was super confused as to why my French toast was not French toast but it could have been worse. In college, I had put uh, rice on the stove because I was making, I don't know what I was making, but I knew rice was happening. So uh -huh. while the rice was cooking, I thought, why don't I run to the basement and put my clothes in the wash? Cut to, I locked myself out. <laughs> oh, no. And I went out, I had no cell phone. At the time I had like a little flip phone from Sprint, a little, a little guy. I don't even know if it had internet, but I know I could still buy ringtones. Like, <laughs> oh, I miss ringtones. That was so nostalgic. <laughs> now if I hear a ringtone, I want to kill myself. I'm like, oh, my phone's not on silent? <laughs> could you put that on silent, please? Jeez. I didn't have Verizon, so I didn't have the ring back, but just a regular ringtone. So I went to my friend's apartment a couple blocks over and was like, hey, 
I left some food on the stove, fire a blazing. Can I use your phone to call the fire department? <laughs> Oh my god, so, the fire was blazing like a like a legit well, fire. I was it was a gas stove, so the fire was on. Oh my god. With the rice, the rice was in there with the water. That evaporated very quickly. No fire was set to the apartment, thank God. But I had to call the fire department. It was super embarrassing because now I'm standing outside of this apartment. I'm in like, I'm like 20, super embarrassed by anything very easily. <laughs> and I'm standing outside. Four fire trucks show up. Oh my God. And then people start trickling out of the apartment buildings nearby. And some of these people are like guys that played football for my dad, but they wouldn't talk to me because they played football for my dad. So now they're all see like all I wanted was their approval and friendship. And they were like, <laughs> no, your dad's going to make us run laps. And I'm like, but he's not. Just play beer pong with me. We'll be best friends. So now all of these guys who, know my dad and don't want to be my friend are watching me like cry as four <laughs> fire trucks show up it's a decent sized apartment building the we could have just rang any old apartment and get buzzed in but nope the fire department took these doors down with their hatchets or whatever and then broke my door down turned the stove off and left and then I had, I'm just standing there, ugly crying over burnt rice. <laughs> oh my God. In a smoky apartment. And then to top it all off, I got billed for the doors being busted. And still no friendship either. <laughs> and still no friendship. I don't know. Like, check going. out, check out coach's daughter. <laughs> what a mess. <laughs> that's now is your dad like super protective like would would they no I I used to try to explain like because because for me my dad being a football coach my entire life I grew up with like a million older brothers that's how I saw it so like I would always be on the field whether I was being like the water girl or carrying the cords for the headsets this is like pre-wireless and just like being at practice and like these guys were like an extension of my family in my childhood but then I got to an age where now I'm the same age as you. So it's a different dynamic. And it's, if I'm at the bar and I see them at the bar and neither of us is supposed to be at the bar because we're 20, <laughs> their fear was that somehow, or maybe it wasn't, maybe they had other fears or maybe they just didn't give a f because they're <laughs> college boys, college athlete boys. Like I'm not, <laughs> I was the least of their worries, I'm sure. And I'm sure I built it up to be something bigger in my head than it actually was. But I used to try to explain, you do know that if I go to my dad and say, hey, dad, I saw A, B, and C at the bar on Friday night. Do you know who's getting in trouble? Me. <laughs> right. Not you guys. I'm not snitching on myself. But it was more of like, we'll just avoid you. <laughs> just to be safe. Rather be safe than sorry. Poor me. Yeah. No, I got, I have a couple friends that played for my dad that we're still friends to this day. So that's pretty cool. But I remember in the time it being like such a bigger deal to me anyway. <laughs> no, I get it. I mean, I'm, I'm introverted and I'm like socially awkward. And if, if I was outside for a fire and I saw people that I knew and wanted to befriend and they didn't say hello, like I would be mortified. That sounds really Oh, I was so mortified. One of them was like nice. I can't remember who it was. He like came to put his arm around me. He's like, it's okay. Breathe. Like, is the apartment on fire? I think they were also like, why is she crying so ugly <laughs> no, I'm an ugly crier very like it's dramatic not intentionally but the way I was reacting made it look like the building was gonna burn down and it was just fucking rice it could have <laughs> could have burnt the building down you never know it could have caught something that's true <laughs> and I, I think you're probably an ugly crier because you're 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 kind of pale white a little bit and I'm pale white too. <laughs> no offense um, I, I was walking on eggshells with that one but <laughs> none taken <laughs> if, you're, if you're super white you just turn pink and red and it's just it's, oh no yeah fruit. so red flushed face it's like dear lord are you doing the um, <laughs> oh yeah oh definitely casual oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just I don't know that like yeah yeah with the tears and the snot and the not being able to breathe 
It's like, why are you having a panic attack? <laughs> yeah. I, I almost burnt my sister's apartment down on one of my upper feasts at homes. I had never made French fries before. And so I didn't realize, like, I put in way too much oil, Deirdre, and the oil was scalding hot. And so when I put the, the, the raw potatoes in, which are kind of wet anyway, it just burned it over and there's a huge fire, but like, I'm just so chill. I was like, I was still recording video. I was like, hey, Emily, there's a fire. Be careful, there's a fire. And like her <laughs> like, rushing into the stove to like turn it off. And like, it's I actually posted the video to my Instagram too. Cause like, it's kind of hilarious how calm I am. I'm literally just like, hey guys, there's a fire. And I'm like still recording. You're like you're like, welcome to the kitchen. Dinner tonight is going to be, oh, be careful in that corner. There's a fire. Yeah, please. Is key, guys. <laughs> I can't put down my, my camera. I need to get this content. <laughs> the camera eats first. We'll deal with the fire later. It's just over there. Don't stress, but don't burn yourself. <laughs> right. So back in my college days, I didn't burn anything down, but I tried to make a basketball cookie and... <sighs> Uh, yes yeah, it's as horrible as it sounds I literally just took like two packages of raw cookie dough I didn't even make it myself and just mushed it into like a ball <laughs> I love your laugh it's so good <laughs> how I, long did you have to bake it for well not long enough because the outside was burnt and the inside was raw and I was like this is my life now <laughs> <laughs> at first I was picturing like one of those like cookie cakes that's just like a giant chocolate chip cookie with like frosting around the edge uh -huh. from like one of those uh cookie spots in the mall do you know what I'm talking about I do it was nothing like that <laughs> <laughs> that's originally that's what I pictured and I was like man I'd love to see Anthony with like a pastry bag and a fun frosting tip just going going at it but no nope. your version of a basketball cookie is way better i didn't understand how ovens worked or physics or anything i just put a big <laughs> ball of dough in there did you eat more than you should have did you try it and you were like this is gross i failed or were you like Fuck it i got a big ass burnt raw cookie I'm well, gonna eat this. I did what I sadly always do because I'm a fat guy. I said, this is horrible. Let me continue to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I would have been disappointed if it was the other way around. <laughs> so Deirdre, let's no. hear, do you have a, a worst dining out experience? We already talked about like the best with the, the Greek and the, the bathing in between bites. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes. I had Greek gods feeding me grapes in between swims. <laughs> Sounds delightful. Um, Bad dining experiences, I feel like for bad dining experiences, maybe there have been like just situations where the server was garbage, but then I also have to take into consideration, maybe they're not garbage and maybe I just have really high standards. <laughs> no, that's true. But what I like to think is like, since I was a server for most of my adult life, maybe they're just having a bad day and like, I get it. Like if you, as long as you're not d very disrespectful, I'll usually let it slide. Like if they forget to Damn. bring a condiment or something, or if they get a little bit of attitude, I'm like, look, work sucks. I get it. Yeah. I try to kill them with kindness. There was, when you asked me this, the only thing I could think of was my friends and I had met up for brunch. Brunch was our jam. We would try to do, I mean, that's most people's jam. That's dumb to say, but yeah, it's like super new. I don't know if anybody's doing it yet. They used to do this thing called like bottomless mimosas. Like, oh my God. <laughs> so we used to go to this place downtown called Barbonia and their food is amazing. But we decided to do something uptown and we went to this restaurant that they're not open anymore. So it doesn't, it, it won't matter if I name them or not. But the server was just a little bit of a hot mess and he took our order and then we never saw him again no. <laughs> never 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 so and did, did someone else was did they have a different food runner like he literally he didn't even come back at all not to check on us not, like the food was dropped off by a food runner and then we just didn't we saw him for the pay the check at the end so we were sitting there and we were like do we tip him do we not tip him we have we happen to have a lot of singles between the three of us. Like, do we, how do we handle this without like, because I also think that as a, as someone who like you, most of 
my entire life has been spent in the industry. I have a, I don't know if it's a bad habit or a good habit, but I over tip and I do make excuses for sometimes bad service. I'll be like, Oh, well they looked busy or he looked busy or he or she or whatever, whatever. 25% for everyone. Like <laughs> I get tip happy. Like somebody told me the other day I was over tipping on like takeout. I tipped like 30%. They're like, why are you tipping so much on takeout? I'm like, well, I don't know. I panicked. I just <laughs> went higher than the higher number. And they're like, you're unemployed. I'm like, ah, I don't know what I'm doing. So I sometimes have a bad habit of over tipping or making excuses or, and I think in the back of my head, it's just because I want to pay it forward. And I'm hoping that it all comes back. Cause if I'm going to tip you heavy, then somebody is going to come into my restaurant and tip me heavy. Like I'm going to get this money back at the same time. I was like, this service was horrible. The food wasn't really that great. He would have made a ton of money on us if had he checked on us. Cause the three of us are big drinkers. So for us to go through a meal and have one drink versus I would have done five, no problem. Like Absolutely. that was silly on his part. So at the end we decided it was like a $80 check. We would tip him the 20%, but we left it, we left him 96 singles, which was kind of petty, but he still was tipped. He got his $16 tip, which, but it was singles. And then my friend wrote a note about how he needs to check on his, yeah. <laughs> the old note. <laughs> you know what though? I, I'm a sucker for a verbal quality check. Like if someone gives me a verbal quality check, but they're rude otherwise, I'm like, wow, what a great server. Yeah. <laughs> like, he was phenomenal. <laughs> 30%. You earned it, buddy. Thank you for checking in on me. Yep, um, you made eye contact from the uh, other side of the restaurant and gave me a thumbs up. And uh, now you can have my whole wallet. Here you go. I'm, I'm very particular myself. Like, What for you is like a perfect server when you're the customer? I like somebody that, because I like to, I like to, ew, I'm going to sound so gross. I like being the fun table. <laughs> <laughs> Live, laugh, love. <laughs> I actually bring in <laughs> my own live, laugh, love sign and put it on the table <laughs> at brunch, That's which you've never heard of. <laughs> um, I like to have fun with the server, but I also, I love a server who's good with like the body language. Cause like, for example, the other day I took myself out to lunch I was on the phone with my mom. I was laughing. I was crying. I was laughing. I was just on the phone with my mom and the server just replaced my beverage. Didn't like read the body language, just kept it moving. Wasn't like overbearing or like, okay, do you need a refill? It's like, just give me the refill. You know, I want it. Right. You, I'm on my fourth Aperol, Aperol spritzes. <laughs> I'm on my fourth one. You know, I'm getting a fifth one. Let's just do this. So I like somebody that can read the table, somebody that's just, you know, actually like enjoys their job. It's a hard job. It's not easy. And I hate it 50% of the time. But like, I like to be, as a customer, I like to be the customer that I like to take care of. And I just, I like a server that can, you know, take a joke. Also, I like a server that can dish it. Sarcasm, I love. I'll take it. If you want to give me, throw some sarcasm. And like, if somebody made a dumb joke and you put them in their place, I love it like that. Like right. just playing around, but also like knowing your shit and being able to like, some, sometimes I don't know what I want and I'll be like, oh, pick for me. And I hate when customers do that to me, but if you give me a recommendation and it's great and I don't know, I, that's fair. I always hated when customers would ask for like seven recommendations and then just order some basic that I didn't even bring up. It's like, well, that that's the other thing. It was like at our job. Oh, what's your favorite thing on the menu? I love the chicken marsala. Ew, I hate mushrooms. Okay, then why are we here? Like, you could have just said, do you recommend anything else? You didn't have to like set the restaurant on fire because you hate mushrooms. How right. you stabbed me, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I don't eat that. Well, you didn't tell me that. You just asked me what my favorite thing was. You didn't give me your list of, of wants and of likes and dislikes. <laughs> so Deirdre, speaking of crazy times dining out, do you remember the time we were very drunk and we went to a diner late night with one of our former coworkers? Yes, I do. Because our former coworker was Mr. Problematic. <laughs> oh my God. That's putting it lightly. He one was problematic without tequila. If you added tequila, it was a fucking 
tornado of problems. Yeah, one night he kept making fun of me and like kept making fun of my high voice and like, I get it, I have a high voice and I am a man with a high voice. You do? Voice. Yeah, you, you, know, you never noticed? Um, <laughs> so like, I get it. Like I'll let the first three to five slide because I get it. Like- if Oh, I, that's very forgiving. <laughs> if, if I meet a dude with a high voice, I'm like, what the f- he has a high voice? Like, even though I have a high voice, I'm still like, what the f- <laughs> so I get it. But he kept making fun of me. So I retorted and said something about his wife. And he goes, bro, if you weren't white, I'd f- you up. And I'm like, what? Because I'm white, I get a free pass. Like, obviously I'm thankful I didn't get beat up, but um, <laughs> why you gotta what? add racism into it? Right, like, I... <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know where to begin attacking that or where to break that down. But that's you don't have to. Sounds about him. No, I know. So we just we don't up, have time. We set it up for the audience. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot to unpack. So let's just skip ahead to the part where he was a big drunk idiot, and there was a wet floor sign, and he drunk. <laughs> he slid from the wet floor <laughs> sign all the way to our table, and then popped up walked over to the host stand and demanded compensation, <laughs> said he was going to sue because he fell. And we were trying to say like, bro, you literally tripped over the gentleman mopping right. and landed on the wet floor sign. Like they're covered. They're good. And I just remember him being at the host stand yelling at the owner and the owner didn't even bat an eyelash. Right, because the owner knew that he had no case. And also, you and I were not on in, on his side at all. We were just like, nah, dude, there was a sign there. You saw it, like, you're drunk, you're hammered. Like, we discredited him so much. And that burger was really good. Shout out to Times Square Diner. Yeah, that diner rules. I love a diner. Like, that's one of the things I miss most about New York is, like, we would work till, like, you know, 12, 30, 1 a.m., go to the bars till 3 or 4, and then hit up a diner. It's like, that's just mad. Mm-hmm. What's your... What was your favorite New York City diner? Probably, and I'll give them a shout out, Green Kitchen on the Upper East Side. It's a little expensive, partly because it's the Upper East Side, but it's expensive, but everything there is so fire. Like literally every option I've ever had there. I even ordered a um, a pina colada once as a joke and it was delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Who orders I a pina used- colada at a diner? I do. I worked at a very expensive diner on the Upper East Side, but it was expensive because they called it a diner-themed restaurant, which blew my mind. I didn't know you could have a restaurant-themed restaurant, but it was their way of charging $15 for pancakes and like $10 for a milkshake. Is $10 for a milkshake? That's expensive, right? That seems a lot. It is. I love that you have to ask because you live in New York, which is so I know. (laughs) I, (laughs) I was in... Long Island a couple summers ago. And every time I go to the beach, I go to this place, Ralph's, which I think started in Staten Island. And they have just like ice cream and water ices. And my friend and I were drunk and we got like two large ice creams with all the toppings. And the girl was like a high school student and she was like, that'll be $12. So we handed her 24. (laughs) (laughs) Thinking these were New York City ice cream prices. She was like, no, it's 12 total. And we were like, keep the extra 12. Buy yourself something nice. Because we straight, but we didn't even, we are not balling. If there, I have no reason to pay $12 at ice cream. But in my head, I was like, $12? $12? That makes sense. <laughs> I've lived in New York City way too long. Yeah, I mean, I lived in the city for, for five and a half years. And when I moved back to Columbus, I felt like I was ripping all these restaurants off. I'm like, $10 for <laughs> a burger and fries? $10? No, this, you're mistaken. Here's 20 <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I did that in Florida. The first time I ever went to Florida, I went out to drink with my best friend and her best friend from like kindergarten since they were like two and we each had two beers and two shots and when the check came I looked at it and I was like this is incorrect because the check was for like 15 dollars like it was less than 20 and I was like ma'am I called the waitress over I was like this there's no way we've had six beers and six shots there's no way you're gonna get fired ma'am let me (laughs) like (laughs) ma'am are you crazy she apologized profusely. She said, I'm so like, it's definitely the wrong check. I'll be right back. 
how did she bring me back a check that was less than ten dollars oh I was like, no God. this is more wrong <laughs> <laughs> uh miss this is the wrong direction i'm sorry this is supposed to go up. <laughs> just take my money please <laughs> That's amazing. So Deirdre, I think we did it. I think we did the dang thing. I thank you so much for being my first guest. I hope it wasn't too rough for you. No, this was awesome. I hope I was good as a guest. You were great. You were awesome. Um, You're awesome. Thank you. Um, is there anything you'd like to plug? I mean, it's a brand new podcast. I don't know how many listeners we're going to have off the jump, but it'll be here for Um a- I'm working right now on a visual arts company. It's in the works, coming soon. So if you want to follow me and my brother on Instagram, uh, the handle is Townhouse Studios, spelled T-O-W-N-E-H-A-U-S, because we're German. Gotcha. And Townhouse with the regular house was gone. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And that's it. That's all I have going on. All right. So that was the podcast. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe, tell a friend. It really helps if you can leave us a review. And if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up on Instagram at Upper Feast or send me an email at alwaysbensilly at gmail.com. All right, I'm Anthony O'Connell, Upper Feast. Thank you so much.